Now, before we can proceed with how these different gases present in air they can be separated, let us talk about this oxygen cylinder which we generally notice in the hospitals. These cylinder which has got oxygen written in it has been extracted from air. That is, this oxygen is separated from the other gases like nitrogen, argon, carbon dioxide, helium, neon, krypton, xenon and etc. So we know that air, it is a mixture of gases like nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide, helium, neon, krypton, xenon, even dust particles are present and water vapor. Now what is the quantity? Nitrogen is present in 78% where oxygen in 20.96%, 64%. Then we have traces of other gas, argon 0.934%, Carbon dioxide 0.04133%, neon, helium, methane, krypton, all these gases, they are present. Among these gases, we derive this oxygen. We separate it from the mixture of different gases that are present in air. Now let us understand how the different components or the different gases present in air are separated. First of all, the air it is allowed to pass through this filter. This filter what it does is it absorbs the moisture that is water vapor and also the dust particles that are present in the air. And now once they absorb all the moisture and water vapor, this air, dry air, it is allowed to pass and it reaches a chamber as you can see which is called as a compressor. Here the air it is compressed under very very high pressure. Whenever air is compressed under pressure what happens is the temperature increases. That is when the pressure increases the temperature also increases. Now, pressure is directly proportional to the temperature. So since there is lots of pressure in the air, definitely the temperature of the air will increase. Now this has become an hot air. Now this hot air is allowed to pass through the chamber which is next to it. Now in this chamber what happens? This hot air, it comes in contact with cold water. That is you can see this uh, circular pipe, the twisted pipe. In this pipe, freezing cold water is allowed inside as you can see in the figure and therefore it keeps revolving in this chamber that is keeps this chamber very very cold and as it keeps revolving in the chamber this hot air it comes in contact with this pipe and therefore loses some of its heat when the hot air it will come in contact with this cold pipe the, it will lose some of its heat and therefore the temperature becomes low of the air. Since the temperature becomes low, this cold compressed air, remember the air is still compressed under pressure. This is allowed to pass through another chamber which is called as separator. In this separator, the air is allowed to expand. Understood? This compressed air, it is allowed to expand that is, it is allowed to spread. The air that was present in a small area, in a small volume, it is allowed to spread to a larger volume. Now what happens? As soon as this expansion takes place, the temperature will drop drastically. The temperature will go down. As we have learned this before also in compression of gases, what happens? If the piston is pushed and there is air then what will happen the temperature will increase but when you release the piston from the same air what is happening is the gas will expand that is those gases they will expand and therefore the heat will also be released out that is the temperature will get lowered in this case similar thing happens in this unit that is called the separator, 
the temperature drops drastically because initially it was passed through uh, it came in contact with this freezing cold water in that uh, chamber where the pipes were twisted in that chamber only the temperature was 0 degree and when it comes to this chamber of separator this temperature becomes so low so low that it comes becomes in negative that is it becomes approximately minus 70 to minus 80 degree and at this temperature the carbon dioxide it solidifies and since it becomes solid carbon dioxide a dry ice here from this separator we are able to separate carbon dioxide as dry ice and rest of the gases that are present in the air they are allowed to pass through another chamber that is called as the expansion jet and as the name suggests in this chamber again it is expanded and therefore because of expansion the temperature gets lowered more and all this air turns into liquid air and this liquid air is then passed through this column that is called as fractional distillation column what are the major constituent here in the air we have oxygen we have nitrogen we have argon we also have krypton also all these gases are present in liquefied form now and all these liquefied gases they have got varying boiling point oxygen has got minus 183 degree centigrade nitrogen minus 196 degree centigrade argon minus 186 degree centigrade and we have already learned that these because of the variation of boiling point we can separate the liquids right the liquids can be separated by because of the variation in boiling point in a fractionating column this fractionating column from near its bottom it is warmed slowly it is warmed slowly in such a way that the temperature in this column is maintained to be minus 184 degree centigrade that is the boiling point of oxygen so what happens this oxygen it will remain in liquid form because it has the highest boiling point and as we know in a fractional distillation column the temperature is highest at the bottom and gradually it increases towards the top a fractional distillation column it is a very tall column okay and there is a temperature gradient that is temperature at the bottom is more and the temperature at towards the top it becomes lesser and lesser so liquid air that is liquid oxygen it is something like this that is shown it is a chamber which contains different fractions and since the temperature is more at the lower part those gases which will have more temperature that is high boiling point they will condense first that is towards the lower part of the fractionating column now let us understand this you can see the fractionating column first of all the liquefied air which has been liquefied now it is pumped into this fractionating column which is a very tall fractional distillation column okay and it has got different different fractions and from each fraction there is an outlet what happens gradually is that when uh, say krypton and xenon they have got high temperature that is minus 154 degree centigrade so this will be collected they will liquefy and they will be collected first and then oxygen liquefied oxygen will be collected because again their temperature is next to krypton and xenon now next what will happen this argon and nitrogen which have more boiling point than oxygen are collected liquid argon present in liquid air has a slightly higher boiling point than oxygen so liquid argon boils off next and collected as argon gas in the middle part of the fractional distillation whereas next what happens it is nitrogen which has the lowest boiling point of approximately minus 196 degree centigrade so on warming liquid nitrogen it boils off first to form nitrogen gas and this nitrogen gas is collected from the top of the fractional distillation column so in this way what happens we are able to separate the different components of air or the different gases present in air because of the difference in boiling point now this is another representation of the same process that how gases they move to different chamber first they are compressed then they are again expanded then carbon dioxide is collected 
and this carbon dioxide is in the form of dry ice and gradually they are allowed to expand again and uh, therefore converting this air into liquefied air and then they are allowed to pass through this fractionating column where krypton and xenon uh, and oxygen they are collected in liquefied form whereas argon and nitrogen they are collected in gaseous form according to the boiling point they condense so students that is all for today uh, take care